Hi everyone. Just hitting live. Um, <clears throat> hello, hello, happy Friday. Um, today I'm excited to talk to you about emotional hygiene. And to ask you the question, are you emotionally unhygienic? Do you have a dirty mind? <laughs> um, and this is a subject um, and some knowledge that has completely transformed my life. And I'm very passionate about share, you know, having this conversation and sharing this with others. I'm just gonna share this in my big creative fun Facebook community. If you're not already in there, go and join there for nonstop inspiration and support on your making your creative dreams a reality. Um, my name's Sarah Mack. I'm a writer and a mindset coach, and I support creative people to have an amazing life, to have fun, to feel fulfilled, and to um, do work that they're passionate about, that they get well paid for, that creates creative freedom and fulfillment in life. Um, and today we're going to talk about emotional hygiene because um, the way I think about it is, you know, we do things every day to take care of our health and our life. Um, and, you know, we're all better and worse at different areas. And that really depends on, you know, like the family we grew up in, the society we grew up in. Um, and we pick up these habits, right? So if we have supportive habits that we've just picked up um that we've picked up i don't know why i can't share this hmm. um that we pick up from our family that we pick up from our communities and <clears throat> you know they can be supporting us without us really knowing that we have them we can take things for granted for example for my family you know we really grew up being very active and exercising a lot and this is, you know, me and my sister are dancers, my brothers play rugby. And this is something that was just ingrained from us. My mom is very active. And um, so, you know, I've created a habit of movement, of regular movement. And that's something that has I've carried with me throughout my life. It has seemed easy for me because I was creating that habit all throughout my childhood. So, um, you know, it's not, it's been easy for us to have healthy bodies, you know, to an extent, I've still had health issues um, that were that were related to things other than movement. Although that's not true, movement still helped me, and it was getting at least it was easy for me to get back into that habit of movement. So, what you know, finances is something that I'm really passionate about talking about because me for my journey, I've gone from being like an absolute disaster when it comes to finances to really like creating new habits, creating different results and completely shifting my reality when it comes to my financial health and well-being. You know, I've, I've like doubled my income, shifted my work to work that I find really fulfilling, that I love, that makes me happy, that gives me freedom and fulfillment. And that's not something that I ever thought was available to me until I learned that, you know, I just didn't have the habits and the tools and the skills to be able to create that. So I invested and, you know, it cost me a lot of money to learn that from other people who knew how to do it. Um, but now I've, you know, I've been creating those new habits and creating different results. And, you know, emotional health is something that we never really talk about. It's been very taboo. And, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of shame attached to not being well emotionally. So, um, so it doesn't come up in conversation very often unless you have, you know, a very open um, group of friends who are, you know, happy to talk about that and are secure talking about their emotional health because it can be a difficult subject for a lot of people. And um, so what I want to, you know, bring the conversation to is, are you hygienic? Are you emotionally hygienic? Like, are you taking care of your emotions every day? Just like you brush your teeth, just like you take a shower. Maybe you go some days where you don't take a shower, that's fine, but you notice the difference in how you feel, right? You notice the difference in how you smell, probably. So it's the exact same thing with your emotions. If you're not engaging in, um, in habits that are cultivating a state of emotional health, then, you know, it's normal that you might slip into feelings of anxiety and depression, feelings of unfulfillment, um, you know, feelings of stagnation, of confusion, of 
you know, short attention span, being distracted, avoidance, resistance, all of these things are side effects of not tending to our mindset and our emotional health. And, you know, I'm not going to say that it's easy to, to tend to these, um, because if you're creating a new habit that you haven't been practicing up until this point, any kind of new habit that you haven't been practicing, remember there's a lot of undoing, there's a lot of undoing of the conditioning, of the behavior patterns, of the habits that you've developed up until this point. You know, cutting out sugar, for example, that can be very difficult at the beginning if you've got a dependency on it. And we become addicted to our emotions, we become stuck in emotional cycles. So undoing that does re require a fair bit of discipline and focus and commitment over a long period of time to start to make those shifts. But I, I absolutely believe that every, you know, mental health issue can be shifted if the person is able to commit to, um, you know, to a regime that allows you to start, um, you know, creating more supportive neural pathways, habits and processes that create positive mental health. So, you know, just take a reflection of what kind of things are you doing that support your mental health? What kind of things are you doing that don't support your mental health? Obviously there's things like diet, our gut is connected to our brain. Things that we're eating directly impact the way, you know, our mental health. You know, when you have those concentration crashes, those sugar crashes in the afternoon, those crashes after drinking caffeine in the morning, where you, or when you get sugar cravings and you go through highs and lows of energy, all of that can be influenced by your diet. Um, and, um, you know, once you start to have that awareness and create that feedback, you start to notice how things that you're eating actually really make you feel when you start to experiment and make changes around that. Obviously, the main one that you that you can have is having a mindset practice where you spend time every day meditating, tending to your awareness and your focus and your ability to be in that conversation and that relationship of control with your mind. So it's not your mind running the show all the time, but you have that ability to create some, some distance and be objective around the thoughts that you are having. Um, and notice how you get to influence them and in turn how that influences the way that you're feeling and the actions that you're taking and the results that you're getting. So having a daily mindset practice, basic emotional health hygiene, that once we add that in, everything starts to change, life gets so much better and easier. Um, then, you know, there's the things that we're consuming, like, are we watching a lot of things that um, kick up a lot of negative emotions, like fear, like things that make us feel insecure, like reading about celebrity lifestyles, or, um, you know, going on social media and, and, and being in negative conversations that don't make us feel good. It's really important to remember that we are the ones that are choosing the conversations that we are a part of. If we're part of a conversation that doesn't feel good, if we don't have the capacity to shift that to a perception that feels better for us, then we can choose to disengage from that conversation. If you need to go on a social media break, go ahead and do it if that's gonna help you nurture and protect your mental health and your emotional health. Um, and, you know, obviously watching the news, it's very fear inducing. It's a lot of negative stories and there's just as much positive um, and inspiring stories going on in the world as there is the news. So I'm personally of the opinion of why, you know, why do we have to be consuming things that fill us with fear and maybe cause us to resist and procrastinate and stop taking positive action when we could be consuming inspiring stories about people in the world, in the world that are spreading good ideas, that are taking positive action, that are really empowering people to take action and create shifts and be a positive contribution to their community. You know, if you have the capacity to consume the news and to make a positive impact, amazing, you are a mental health ninja. Um, but if you need to take a break from that for a while while you can't cultivate positive health for yourself, do that. And don't let anyone else feel guilty for making you do that. Same with movies, you know, what kind of ideas are you consuming? It's kind of like you're, it's just like, just like junk food. If you're eating a lot of junk food, like white grains, sugar, um, things that, you know, give you screwed up concentration and, you know, emotional highs and lows, um, it's the exact same thing with media. If you're consuming things that give you emotional highs and lows and make you feel, fill you with fear, make you feel like you've got FOMO, make you feel a lot of emotions that aren't stable, that aren't grounded, um, that aren't, you know, inspirational and inspiring you to action, then just cut them out and notice the difference in your life and feeling more stable, feeling more grounded, 
feeling you know more connected to your own intuition rather than constantly consuming other people's ideas and then taking action from that place and notice the impact that has on your life so there are so many little shifts that we can take to cultivate emotional hygiene and emotional health and if we're not doing it every day then it's our own responsibility if we're experiencing you know anxiety and depression um and these things really are all in within our control and of course seeking help when you need it asking for external help um, from practitioners from um, you know doctors and psychiatrists but really trust your intuition as to who can support you and really take your power back and acknowledge that there are so many actions that you can take to support your emotional health um, you know and this is it's speaking from personal experience as somebody who went through chronic fatigue, suffered from severe depression for years. You know, I just got curious and asked how are the ways that I could support myself. I took action on all of them that were within my power and within my budget at the time. And, um, and they've all worked for me. And, you know, that's a combination of nutrition, of supplementation, um, and mindset work and physical exercise. Once you attack, you know, once you take action, in all of those areas, um and really taking care of your your gut health as well then that's such a strong and supportive foundation upon which to have really really strong emotional health and of course it's a journey and you need to be patient and you will always have highs and lows we're human beings our the human experience is very emotional um but we get to strengthen our ability to be in that conversation and not run and hide from our emotions, not suppress them or repress them, but really, you know, learn how to manage them. And there are so many tools, there's so much support that we can lean on to help us with that. Um, one of my favorite ways that I have used to nurture emotional well-being and um, emotional health and feeling good and feeling happy and fulfilled is committing to a daily creative practice just for, you know, even five, 10 minutes a day has made all the difference for me and committing to something that I enjoy that makes me feel really good. Um, and the power of doing that consistently on a daily basis has literally probably been one of the most powerful things that I have done to transform my emotional health. So I'm really excited about um, Creative Fun Club, which is a 30 day program launching in December to create accountability to committing to five, 10 minutes a day minimum. You can commit more to doing something creative that you really enjoy and making that a habit because there are just so many benefits of doing that from you know creating good feelings actually enjoying yourself enjoying your life becoming really magnetic to all the things that you want to inspiration to new relationships being attractive to money opportunities all of that comes from a place where you are feeling good and you're not bogged down in the dumps with anxiety and depression and negative emotion so it really creates a powerful shift when you do that for yourself. It sends a lot of messages to you internally that you're ready to receive good things. You're ready to enjoy life. You're ready to really um, commit to yourself. So my um, the early bird price ends today and the price is doubling tomorrow. So if you want to get in on that, there's a link in my bio. And um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to message me. And thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.